the thing about the Jews is they will enrich themselves in every way imaginable at the expense of the people they are around, which they don't identify with. And they do so much damage, it even destroys them. They don't know when to stop enriching themselves. And it's not even about money with these people. It's about power and influence. It's about supremacy. So while the Irishmen on Wall Street, which exists, by the way, they're just making money. They're not thinking, we're going to take over the planet. It's not Irish people pushing hate speech laws. Because the Jews aren't about money. They have all the money. What they want is power because their Judaism, their Jewishness makes them think they're superior to everyone and they should rule the world and we should be below them. The Irish don't think that. The Mexican landscape doesn't think that. The Italian plumber doesn't think that. The Greek diner owner doesn't think that. The Indian guy at the gas station pumping gas, he doesn't think that. The Chinese guy with the Chinese food store doesn't think that. The Muslim selling rugs doesn't think that. The black man who drives a freaking truck doesn't think that. The Jew thinks that. Every one of them think that. Go ask them. Hey, why do you call yourself a Jew? Oh, well, you know, I'm a Jew. I'm, I'm, I'm part of the chosen people. Literally every one of them. Even the ones who aren't religious, they're chosen. Well, we got to make some... Well, this is what we Jews do, you know? We're... We're raised this way. We have ethics that we have a better ethic uh, code, and and we're supposed to spread this ethic. We don't want your ethics. Your ethics suck. They're literally satanic. They're the opposite of ours in every way. Look what they're doing in Gaza. That's their ethics. That is the way of waging Jewish war, not Zionist war. There are many rabbis saying, this is how we wage war. This is how the Torah tells us to wage war. They justify it. Men, women, children, cattle, holy sites. And what's getting blown up in Gaza? All the things I just mentioned. And killing children. Why? Because in their religion, Hashem says, you kill the child because you spare them suffering. Why? Because when you kill them when they're young, they don't grow up to be worse than their parents. They have no vengeance to seek. You cut them off when they're young, it reduces their suffering. That's the way of Judaism. Not Zionism. All they see, oh, it's just Zionism. No, it's Judaism and it's Jews. Jews for thousands of years have been kicked out of 89 countries 109 times. Why do I have to repeat that all the time? Why aren't you getting it? It's not Zionists 89 countries 109 times because Zionism didn't exist until 1897. It's Jews. It's Jews right now. It's Jews running Hollywood, academia, our foreign policy. It's not Zionists. Left-wing Jews in Hollywood. It's left-wing. They're not conservative. They're left-wing Jews, open border society, all this bullshit, wokeness. They're destroying things in Hollywood. The neocon Zionists on the right, they're the ones destroying things in the Middle East. They're everywhere. They're on the left and the right. You can't escape it. They control all sides. That's the Jewish problem. And they control all sides to enrich themselves, to empower their people over yours. And they don't identify as you. It's literally an alien, hostile force among your people. And they don't belong here. That's the truth. That is the truth, because Jews are an ethnocentric religious group. Even when they're not religious, they're still an ethnicity. They're not like Muslims or anyone else. Anyone can be a Muslim. Anyone can be Christian. Anyone can be Hindu. Anyone can be an atheist. But even an atheist Jew is an atheist Jew. He's still a Jew, even when he's not religious. And the solution to this problem is to remove Jews from power. They don't belong there, and they don't deserve it. Had they taken their power and benefited all humanity, including the people they live among, especially the people, then there'd be no problem. But the Jewish problem is that they don't. They literally harm the people around them, and they create laws to protect themselves while they're harming the people around them, from the people that they're harming. 
That's the Jewish problem, and that's why Jews are the problem and have to be dealt with accordingly. And what does this mean? Hurt people? No, it means, hey, you, you're done, you're fired, get out. It's literally a massive boycott of all Jewish everything. They don't deserve to be in power. They have to be removed. Of course, I promote peace. Peacefully removing. Listen, we got we, the gigs up, Shlomo. Get the hell out of here. That's the way it should be done. Will they let that happen? I don't know. But you want to see Jewish power at its maximum? Just look at Gaza. That's what they would do to you and your family if they had the power to do it. They don't have it to do it in America, not yet. But they did it in Russia and other countries, and they're doing it right now in Gaza, and that's what these Jews are truly like. Don't be fooled by the anti-Zionist Jews. They're putting up a facade to deceive you. They're in fact protecting their Israeli brothers. And if you don't see that, well then you're not going to see anything. And you won't see it coming when they come for you. I know for me personally, it's really hard to watch this constant genocide, the constant killing of children, of babies, and uh, seeing politicians and the satanic West cheering it on. Makes one think that, uh, you know, this is hopeless. And uh, I think we're all feeling like this uh, cat right here. They saw the truthers that uh, we're this close, you can see it, gonna ready to snap, I think. <laughs> Sure, many of us feel like that cat, ready to lose it, claw rise of maybe. But seriously, I'm looking all over the place, I'm, I'm following feeds, and there is a mass awakening happening. I could not imagine seeing clips like I'm finding and people coming out and speaking the truth like this, even a few months ago, before this genocide started. Most people were willfully blind to this threat. We talked about the deep state, we talked about globalists, we talked about all oh, the Committee of 300, the Freemasons, all of which you can criticize openly and not lose your job and not be destroyed financially, lose your bank account, blah, blah, blah. There's only one group you can't do that, that people are really starting to notice. You can be breaking the law if you boycott Israel in America, 37 states in America, they have a law. If you if you boycott Israel or talk shit about Israel, you're breaking the law. But in these 37 states, if you talk shit about America and boycott American products and, and, and go against it, you're not breaking the law. You're breaking the law if you talk about Israel in America. So you can boycott America in America, but you can't boycott Israel in America. Wait, you know how everybody's saying the only country in the world is occupied is Palestine? <laughs> no, 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 no. America is being occupied, it has been for so many years. Americans, do you know what I'm talking about? Everybody's talking about it, not just me. So we should say we live in the United States of Israel. Oh my God, we've been chanting, not the wrong slogan, but we need to fix it. Free, free USA. Free, free USA. All jokes aside, even though it's not funny, we in America work for the Zionist. The system is owned by them. Yes, I said it. It is owned by them. Wake up, America. I know a lot of people are waking up. How many billions of dollars 
we send them every year and how we have been sending and now they're asking for 14 billion dollars to send to Israel to bomb kids yeah children women elderly people innocent people hey you're not fighting Hamas you're just killing people and by the way I can't keep my language clean fuck Joe Biden Look at this. A foreign government is bragging that they have a 98% success rate in picking our politicians for us. That's a screenshot from their own website, APEC.org. Our government ignores all protests, ignores the voters, ignores everybody. But this foreign government has a 98% success rate in picking our politicians. Democracy is just an illusion. Just an illusion. There is no democracy. I was today's years old when I found out do you know that there are laws on the books that make it illegal for you to protest or boycott Israel? The ability to boycott is protected under the First Amendment. But yet, states in the United States of America have made laws to where it is illegal to boycott Israel, no matter what. It's against the law. You can go to jail for it. What country makes it illegal to boycott or protest against another country? This is not the case with any other country in the world, including this one. They can spit on our flag, burn our flag, do whatever. But you dare not, you dare not boycott Israel. And now they're making laws to where if you say anything anti-Israel, it's against the law. Yeah, I think we can uh, ascertain who runs this country. And it sure as hell ain't the American people. When I say everybody, I mean everybody. Here's Elmo. Based Elmo, name of the Jew. Um, Think about international Jew by Henry Ford. Kids. Kids are here I'm not making money because the Jewish costume company is harassing me. That's why I'm doing it. And that's why I want people to read about the international Jew. Because if you start your own business in this city, Jews will harass you. Read about the international Jew. <laughs> that is the scariest Elmo I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, if Elmo doesn't cut it for you, I'm telling you, people from all walks of life, all races are waking up. It's not just the white people, although we need to wake up, especially the white Christian Zionists, who are completely mind screwed with the Schofield Bible. But, uh, Look at this based Asian guy. He seems to know what's going on here. I'm from China. What do you think about Israel, Palestine and everything? Uh, I want to show you something. Hi, Hitler. Oh. Yeah, wow. I'm a Hitler fan. You're, so, you're a hit what do you I don't like Jew. What do you think of the Jews? I think they should be gassed. Gassed? Wow, that's crazy, bro. Yeah. Why? Because Jew control the world. White people deserve a place to live and a future. Gullible white Protestant Bible belters will plug into conservative ink and be convinced to abandon their own families by the Zionist funding that hates them. We'll need to spend their tax dollars to annually bring illegal immigrants to storm our institutions and turn our progeny into the useful idiotic communist homosexuals that we see today. Leaving behind only suffering, death, poverty, and a world raped of its resources, alienated from the cross. Whenever any of us point out the paper trail funding behind organizations dedicated to causing societal destabilization, in the West, we are immediately smeared as anti-Semitic Nazis and find ourselves in a situation where the judge and perpetrator are one and the same. It is the greatest showcase of being a protected class when you can exercise both the power of being the aggressor and the power of being the victim, utilizing the sword of critical theory and the shield of political correctness. Because if you want to know who controls you, look at who you're not allowed to criticize. In other words, lying to your face about crimes against Jews and blaming white people. And you Trump Tar boomers love eating that shit up, don't you? So while hundreds of thousands of unreported white murders continue along the southern border. Let's continue to keep sending our own children off to war in the Middle East with zero benefit, pretending there is no manipulation or agenda by the fully controlled Zionist media getting orally asphyxiated by the establishment right.
But until the next one, my boys, shalom. Well, I know he said Trump tarred in that video. And, uh, you know, I got to say that Trump's position on Israel is uh, leaving me very uncomfortable. And if you haven't noticed, I haven't uh, talked about Trump in quite a few broadcasts now, precisely because of that. And I'll play a clip later that uh, might shed some light on uh on uh, this, maybe some 5D chess happening, I'm not sure. But uh, some of Trump's supporters, I don't know, people like in the uh, Freedom Convoy, the American one that's going down to the border, that uh, is trying to uh, prevent the immigrant invasion, the Jewish-led, uh, funded immigrant invasion. Well, they're calling out Jews too. The other main funder is actually is highest, highest. The Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society, Jewish, right? This is quite interesting because they are actually funding the people. They're going to come to places like Fort Lauderdale, synagogues, and they're going to scream, Allah, Akbar! And they're going to shoot the shit out of them, right? And they're coming across the border, and they're being, they're, it's being funded with Jewish money, right? Everyone seems to be noticing that all the world's problems all the ailments, trans insanity, abortion, pedophilia, all of it seems to stem from the same group. And the mass immigration into the West, their collegue group plan in Europe, we ha we're suffering through this in Canada, and of course, most famous United States with its open borders. Everyone's noticing. Everyone. Now, this guy's spot on about most things except for his numbers. He thinks that there's only 8 million. Uh, last I saw, the numbers I was seeing, more like 30 million plus invaders. So uh, this is what's happening. Wake up. Over 8 million illegal immigrants have crossed the United States southern border since Joe Biden took office. And a lot of people are asking, why would the United States allow what is effectively an invasion of its southern border under this government? The man that's in charge of the US border, Alejandro Mayorkas, is actually an immigrant himself, being from a Cuban Jewish family who fled Cuba after the Cuban Revolution in the 1960s. But what not a lot of people know is that Mayorkas was actually a member of the board of directors of HIAS, or the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society, which is one of the biggest NGOs pushing open borders in the United States. And he was a board member right up until the point where he moved to become the Secretary of Homeland Security. On their website, HIAS describes itself as a Jewish organization dedicated to the rights of asylum seekers and refugees. In 2017, it organized the Jews for Refugees Assembly, which brought together over 50 very powerful Jewish organizations in the United States, including the ADL, to lobby for more asylum seekers into the United States and to oppose Donald Trump's ban on immigration from Muslim countries. HIAS gets over $100 million a year from the government that Mayorkas is a part of, and that funding has only exploded since 2020. Now it has been discovered that HIAS is directly facilitating the invasion of the United States southern border by helping immigrants cross the so-called Darien Gap, which connects South America to the American continent. They have a dedicated building used as a processing facility there and are using their funding to help build roads and other forms of transport to help immigrants reach North America. They have even produced maps in Spanish to explain to immigrants how to best reach the United States southern border. Mayorkas is apparently aware of this and has even visited these facilities. Now, this seems like a conflict of interest, yet it hardly gets discussed in mainstream immigration discussions. And once people start to notice, they continue noticing. And they start digging and they find things out. Uh, this is for my American friends, my American viewers. Did you know, you know, y'all you, you don't have free health care unless you're Jewish. Did you know that if you're Israeli, you get free health care in the United States and free organs? Yeah. How's that? Come to the U.S. and receive our organs. Okay, this is actually insane. I don't think people realize how connected the U.S. and Israel are. Not only does the U.S. give Israel billions of dollars every year that helps fund their free health care, meanwhile Americans do not receive free health care in the U.S., 
but that was just a travel nurse who worked on an organ donation floor in the U.S. And she said that what she learned like through her experience working on that floor was that Israelis can come to the U.S. for free and receive any medical procedure if the hospital in the U.S. is better or offer something that they can't get in Israel or if they need an organ donation, they can receive American organ donations and they can come to the U.S. and everything's paid for, their flight's paid for, their hospital stay, their medical procedure, everything is free. Meanwhile, if, if an American were to get an organ donation, it could cost them $70,000 in medical bills for being in the hospital, but an Israeli will get it for free. And she also said that at any given time, this floor would be half Israelis at this hospital. And she thinks that Israelis might be fast-tracked because she talked to one patient who had a heart and a lung transplant. And within a week of being in the U.S., she was getting her donation. Meanwhile, like Americans could be on this list for years to wait for a match or wait to get a transplant. Like that's just, this is just insane. It's crazy to me that Americans are struggling to pay for healthcare, but Israelis can come and get medical procedures for free. Like how does that make any sense? When Americans are paying their taxes and the money is going towards their healthcare system as well as Israel's healthcare system, how can Israelis get free healthcare in Israel and the US? Like how, how does that make any sense? So now that they're uh, being exposed and everyone's starting to notice, what does our treasonous governments do? Oh, they're going to take us to war. You're going to go fight Russia. You're going to go fight for Israel. You're going to go fight Iran, the Muslim world. The only problem is we ain't going, man. You're going to give me a gun? Really? You're going to give me a gun? And uh, <laughs> good luck with what happens next. Um, but, yeah, the people who be lining up to fight are the ones that, who are awake and we ain't going. So they've released the draft in the UK, which means that America and Australia will soon follow suit. Um, what's the incentive? What is the incentive to go and fight in a war that is guaranteed going to lose because you're going up against Russia, who has double the amount of people, and they have China in the pocket, including most countries of Asia. So what what is the incentive? And on top of that, what is the point of this war? We can't trust the government because the government's been lying to us for God knows how long. We can't trust the media because the media is not going to report on anything that the government's telling us that's a lie. A lot of army vets that have already done their service are homeless. Is that what you want? Is that the incentive to want to go? What is the government going to do that will make us want to go to war for them? You already screwed us over in taxes because you had to make sure that the bodies at the top were not going to end up paying a single dime, but it was okay to squeeze everyone that was earning an honest living, and all of us had to scrimp and see of just to buy a carton of eggs. Never mind the fact that the health systems are messed up in every single country. I mean, America is definitely the worst for that. House prices are non-affordable, and now you're saying you want the people that you have screwed over to go and fight in a war that has nothing to do with them or the countries involved and you want you want them to go to war for you with a guarantee that they are going to get absolutely annihilated because let's face it no one is going to win that war up against Russia have you ever played risk yet yeah, you can't win against Russia especially with the people that they've got in the back pocket I really hope people see this so that they don't feel like they are obligated to go and serve a country that has fucked them up Hey, I'm allowed to be petty. The government tried to kill me a couple of years ago. They've killed an awful lot of people over the last few years. Absolutely not. They do not deserve your life for their financial gain. So, uh, for those who don't know, there was an attack from Iran last night on American troops. And this just goes to show that we do not give Israel billions of dollars. We have spent trillions of dollars on this if you look at the national debt like right before 2000 2001 we were paying our debt down for once we were starting to actually pay our debt down and then we get iraq and afghanistan trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars we have spent for this zionist project for these ungrateful Profoundly ungrateful, profoundly entitled, disgusting, rotten pigs to fly from across the world into Israel and take people's land. Jacob, you know this is not your house. Yes, but if I go, you don't go back. So what's the problem? Why are you yelling at me? I didn't do this. I didn't do this. But you're you're, it's you're, easy to yell at me, but I didn't do this. Yeah, you are Russian. stealing my house. 
And if I don't steal it, someone else is gonna steal it. No, no one, no one uh, uh, is allowed to steal it, Yami. We have to pay the price for that. I had to pay the price for that. They've given trillions of dollars, trillions of dollars, lost untold amount of lives. And what thanks do you get? If I were to walk down the streets of Jerusalem, having lost my own brother for their own bullshit, I would be spat on because I'm a goyim, because I'm a Gentile. They don't care. I'm American. I'm not a part of their tribe. I'm not a part of their little theocratic ethno state. So they'll take all my money, all my blood, and spit on me in return. And my own government thinks that's great. It doesn't care. It's just more money for the military industrial complex. That's all they care about. If you're in the military right now, like, get the fuck out. They do not care about you. In fact, quite the opposite. They're happy to see you die. Get the fuck out. You will never see more ungrateful entitled, shitty people than the people that you are being told to die for. Don't fucking do it. Now, of course, the UK's all in because they're run by the Jewish bankers from the city of London. And uh, let's talk about Ukraine for a second. What was all of this about? Well, it was about the Heavenly or the New Jerusalem Project. The Russian speaking of area Russian speaking areas of Ukraine were supposed to be ethnically cleansed. Get rid of all the Russians, and then the Jews can move in, except for that ain't what happened. Дело в том, что у этой проблемы важной, казалось бы, нерешаемой, есть решение, есть ответ. Называется он Небесный Иерусалим. В дальнейший термин «Небесный Иерусалим» я буду использовать так же, как «Новый Иерусалим», «Новая Земля». Но чтобы было понятно вашим зрителям, что все это обозначает э, одну и ту же территорию, один и тот же проект. В главе 21 книги Откровения Иоанна Богослова, которая является последней книгой Нового Завета, сказано, что богоизбранный и богоспасаемый народ обретет землю Нового Иерусалима, на которой после этого будет э, продолжить свой путь к счастью и к процветанию. По нашему мнению, земли Нового или Небесного Иерусалима расположены на юге Украины. Это пять областей. Это Днепропетровская, Запорожская, Херсонская, Николаевская и Одесские области. Именно на территории этих областей в дальнейшем будет создан Новый Иерусалим, который позволит... Э, продолжить развитие и земной путь для всего еврейского народа. What Ukraine seems to be all about is called payback time. Ukrainians have been killing Jews for 400 years. Ever since Khmelnyky in 1648 wiped out one third of European Jewry. And they have been doing a great job killing Jews. In fact, uh, in World War II, they were more vicious than the Nazis. In fact, the Nazis had to say, you know, they, we, we like the fact you're killing Jews, Let's show you how to be more efficient. So what's interesting is before the end of time, the Bonsham says, well, Ukraine has been especially active in killing Jews, so what I'm going to do is destroy them. The Ashkenazis hate, absolutely hate Russians. So they thought they would ethnically cleanse the Russians, take over Ukraine, and uh, have their puppet Zelensky make everything happen. But that ain't what happened. This is what happened. Now, as soon as they saw the writing on the wall, 
that Russia is winning and will win. It's baked in the cake. So I haven't been covering a lot of Ukraine because there's no point. Russia's already won. They're just going through the motions. Yeah, Russian style, slow grind, but they're doing it. And uh, every day, that's uh, one more nail in the coffin for Jew grain. There won't be a Jew grain when this is done. So what do they do? They move on to Israel to pull out the Christian Zionist heartstrings and to ensnare America to go fight their war, right? With a atrocity propaganda. This was an unprovoked attack. They will make you feel that it was I'm unprovoked. Babies, their heads fall off. They're going to circulate this information so that the whole world believes it. Pictures of terrorists beheading children. This morning, CNN reported that Israel cannot confirm the specific claim that babies were beheaded. She claims Israeli children kidnapped and kept in cages. Uh, we found the original video was in fact published a few days before the Hamas attack. They're going to play the victim in any way possible. They're going to stand with the oppressor, ironically using pictures from the oppressed. They're going to reduce your reach every time you post about it. But the truth will always be clear for those who are willing to find it. But your propaganda ain't working, man. They tried to pull this COVID hoax crime against humanity and in the process created the digital army. And we are a force to be reckoned with. They can't compete with us. No one trusts the fake news anymore. And the truth is coming out whether they want it to or not. People are really starting to notice all their lies. And now a public service announcement. Every day, thousands of white people around the world are becoming aware of Jewish cultural Marxist propaganda. Their countless Jewish lies are catching up to them, which will lead to their inevitable collapse. As their farce of eternal victimhood unravels, we begin to see them as the demons that they truly are. It's only a matter of time before Jewish tyranny is eradicated once and for all. This public service announcement was created by Black Crimes Matter. All of their machinations, their control system is crumbling. It only survives in darkness. Now, not to pat my back, but I like to think I played a small role in exposing these scumbags. But I'm not the only one. This guy's name here is uh, Ryan Dawson. And um, he's on Twatter, and uh, he's knocking it out of the park, man. This is good. It's 12 minutes. Usually I don't play clips that long, but I'm going to make an exception with this one because it's that good. How did Israel gain so much power over the United States? It comes in four parts. Level one, bribery. Creating the mega donors. Level two, blackmail. Level 3, the media, and Level 4, the origin. Let's start with the bribe. They created the largest self-licking ice cream cone. In short, 
U.S. foreign aid to Israel, which is always in the billions, is split into two. One part is earmarked for U.S. defense industries making the MIC happy. The other part goes to benefiting the commercial interests of a select cabal of extremely wealthy state leeches. This creates a donor class. The donor class then lobbies directly or finances professional lobbies like APAC to bribe Congress to do Israel's bidding. Their first demand is always to send more money. If a congressman gets out of line, they will finance their opponent. 97% of APAC approved candidates win. The United States is subsidizing its own subversion by a foreign state. Israeli bribes come from the American taxpayers. The entire gambit relies on foreign aid and an unregistered lobby. If the U.S. would end aid to Israel, the entire cycle stops. Why did the aid start? To keep the Suez and the Red Sea away from the USSR. But our greatest allies spied on the United States stealing the signal intelligence and first strike plans and gave them to the Soviet Union in exchange for Jewish diaspora to move to Israel. This is why years ago I realized U.S. foreign aid is at the root of everything that sustains their power. in all aid to Israel. Level 2 blackmail. In much the same way, a network of wealthy Jews acts as the financial backbone to construct a massive blackmail operation. This is exactly what the Jeffrey Epstein pedophile ring was. Billionaires like Les Wexner, Leon Black, Glenn Dubin, all Jewish Zionists, all with ties to the Israeli state officials, bankrolled the operation that Maxwell and Epstein managed with Jean-Luc Burnell and Claude Haddad. Once someone is compromised or doesn't want to lose access to what you're offering, money bribes are no longer necessary. In fact, through blackmail, you can force another to institute bribes on your behalf. So let's expose them. They hate being named. Demons operate in the dark. I name every major capo in that operation in these maps and in this client list. Ethnic nepotism, owning media. Zionist Jews are an ownership class. They get capital from the US and they buy up existing functional businesses. As owners, they have real wealth created by other people's ideas and labor, a real parasite. Not only do they get foreign aid, they actually loan some of it back to the U.S. with interest. Call it usury usurpation. It's one of the oldest tricks. They didn't create the sports teams, the movie industry, the music industry, or anything else. They just own it with capital acquired through extortion. To extort you out of money, then lend it to you at interest is one of the shiftiest things one can do. This cult mutilates infantile genitalia, runs pedophile rings, steals organs, assists illegal immigration, and wants to mindfuck your son into chopping his dick off. Recently, they assassinated patients in a hospital, handcuffed women and children, and buried them alive. It is a demonic pantheon. Ask yourself this, if demons were real and on earth, what kind of evil would they do? What evil act could they do that Israelis haven't already done? Just like Jacob, the entire nation of Israel is based on theft and lying. But lies do not work without darkness. No industry capture is more vital or important than grabbing the mass media and social media. Or free speech would strip their ability to lie and without that, the father of lies has no power. We have eyes. We can see. Israeli propaganda and American propaganda 
is not working anymore. No one is buying that crap other than the dumb people in Washington who think, oh, we're just going to get everybody on cable news to say Israel is awesome and the Palestinian lives don't matter, that they're scrubby little savages and we're allowed to murder them 24-7. It's not working. The rest of us are enraged. Every war and the resulting famines begins with a lie. Their propaganda no longer works. They've lost their monopoly on media and social media, and they made all efforts to brainwash Elon Musk. And the world saw that desperation too. The world can see their child-murdering demonic behavior. That's how they've always been. So I have very little sympathy for what has become of that state. It's a, it's a satanic state. You know, you look at the polls, 60% of Israelis, 60% say Israel's not using enough force in Gaza. It's not using enough force in Gaza. If you look at every metric out there, every metric, intensity of bombing, payload of bombs, imprecision of bombs, Destruction of civilian infrastructure, ratio of civilians to combatants killed, ratio of women and children to total numbers killed. If you look at every metric, there have been so many studies now done. What Israel is doing in Gaza is in the class completely its own. I don't see the other side. I don't see the concentration camp guard side. They're killing people in the concentration camp. They're killing people in a concentration. They can't go anywhere. They can't flee. Free speech means the death of Israel. The same men celebrating on 9-11 stated this. Give us 20 years and we'll take over your media and destroy your country. Once a Zionist captures an industry, they simply refuse to hire anyone but each other. This ethnic nepotism is reinforced by creating co-compromises. The ownership class can now act to finance the bribing operation, the blackmail operation, as well as Israeli affiliates whose job it is to smear dissenting voices, ruin their reputations, deplatform them, or even jail them if they can. It is different than blackmail because it just relies on defamation. Ironically, they also run the Anti-Defamation League. But in reality, it is absolutely a defamation league. This dovetails with controlling the media. Not only do they filter the news you get to hear, they openly get to smear and censor anyone who disagrees. There would not have been a war in Iraq or Syria or an attack on Yemen or this ethnic cleansing in Palestine without a complete control of the narrative on U.S. media. And there would not be an ownership class, a bribery or blackmail ring if the U.S. was not subsidizing its own subversion through the act of foreign aid. In all aid to Israel. Cut this cycle and their power will collapse. For the first time in my lifetime, they're starting to lose and it's because demonic behavior needs a monopoly for their lies to work. Every child they murder is a step closer to their own demise. Without total censorship, their indefensible campaign of ethnic cleansing and theft is exposed. If there is any meaning to the otherwise meaningless deaths of all these people that these self-righteous lunatics have slaughtered, it is that each one hastens Israel's self-destruction. As for the fourth level, the origin. Zionist terrorism started long before October 7th. We made a whole film on that. Here's a clip. Zionism. Fascism with a mythological rationalization for terrorism and territory. 
It's difficult for normal people to fathom the mindset of psychopaths. It is hard for sane people to understand the fanaticism of the God is a real estate agent crowd. And for some reason, so long as a group can maintain victimhood status, they can deflect and excuse their current abhorrent behavior. The individuals who would make up the first Israeli government and institutions were the same people who formed terrorist organizations where by any means necessary they would get Jews to move to Palestine even if it meant working with the Nazis, even if it meant murdering children. The Haganah, Ergun, and Stern gangs were involved in terrorism well before the creation of Israel in 1948. The list of atrocities could not be covered in a single film, but one incident sticks out which really displays their ardent attitude for an ethnic state, and that is the SS Patria. Rather than allowing illegal Jewish refugees to leave Palestine, they bombed the ship the day it was leaving and murdered hundreds of people. We're on the offense now. Hamas made Satan bleed. End all their aid. Break the media. Support the resistance. Take away their money. Despite all the censorship, despite the fact that they owned all the snake news, and uh, despite all the crooked politicians and the stranglehold of information, we got through, man. We're getting through. Even on a controlled platform like Twitter, mine get opened up a little, but Elon going to Israel proves something, and now they're banning more accounts that are uh, not down with the genocide, you know what I mean? So, uh, but just to show you, how awake people are becoming. Elon Musk made a comment about the Bolsheviks and look at the comments. It blew up. People know. They know. It's not just this current genocide. Every single war that the United States has been into, Libya, Iraq, they're hoping for Iran. I don't think it's going to happen. Iran will kick their ass if they do, but I don't think even uh, the United States Pentagon is that suicidal. They know that they're 
entire military industrial complex would crumble as soon as their aircraft carrier got sunk to the bottom of the sea. It's bad enough all their weapons lost and were proven inferior in Ukraine. Russia kicked their ass. Now who everybody in the world uh, that's not a vassal of the United States and the Jews is buying their weapons off of Russia. And there goes the military industrial complex that is nail in the coffin. But uh, let's talk about the other wars. Remember all the terrorists and the war on terror? I already showed you before that the 9-11 uh, was done by the Jews, right? But what about ISIS and Al-Qaeda? Well, here's the face of ISIS. Here's your terrorist, okay? ISIS is the Israeli Secret Intelligence Service, according to who? According to Israel, according to the Jews. We created ISIS. I mean, ISIS is no less than uh, the people up in Islamburg, no less than Gulen, is a CIA creation. Um, John McCain, for heaven's sake, was over there with the, with the ISIS officials. We created them. They came from the al Nursi group, the uh, Syrian Liberation Front. They, these two organizations combined, and they, they, they morphed into ISIS. It's our creation. We create them. We still direct them. When ISIS warriors are injured in, in battle, where are they transported? They're transported, for heaven's sake, to Israel. They're treated by the Israelis in Israeli hospitals and brought back to battle. Well, plenty, plenty of the rebels have admitted, acknowledged that they've been supported by Israel, and they've, they've thanked Israel for helping oh, them yeah. throughout. In fact, arms are oftentimes caught, Israeli arms are caught on, you know, en route to the rebel groups. Uh, subversion, um, trying to foil plots against the state of Israel, political plots and others. You tell the story about how you tried to find out what the what they call the Mossad when they deal with uh, I publicly? A, I thought it was a reasonable question, but the trouble is uh, you can't pick up the phone book. There's no uh, Langley in, uh, in Israel that you can look up you know, CIA, or in our case, uh, the Mossad. We thought we should ask, what shall we call it in English? You can translate the Hebrew words. As I said, Mossad is institute. But when they write a letter to their friends in the CIA or the British intelligence, what do they call themselves? It took a while. Uh, it was a matter of asking the prime minister's spokesman. The best you could do because officially uh, the Mossad is under the prime minister's office. And uh, I think he sort of wondered why you want to know and all that. So we explained. And he came up with uh, the Israeli Secret Intelligence Service. I mean, if it were to have initials, it would be ISIS. -S. Just simple words like that. Now, as people are waking up to all the Jewish douchebaggery in our Zionist-controlled government and the COVID crime against man, it's all from these same people. How can you support a government? You know it's against the law. It is, a, it, it is actually complicity in genocide to financially support someone committing genocide. There's a bunch of cases, and I cover that in a bit. But... Uh, as far as a taxpayer goes, if that's where your taxes are going, isn't it against the law then to pay taxes? Kind of like this meme here. <clears throat> we decided that we're not paying taxes anymore. Instead, we're going to hang y'all. What a great idea. And it seems like a lot of people, a lot of people are sending a clue on to this. National War Tax Resistance Coordinating Committee. They have advice. They have lawyers. What we're doing now is more than 50 cents out of every dollar we give to the federal government goes to war. And now we know it's paying for genocide. We've got to stop giving them the money. Thank you know, you. there's a risk. There's a risk. But there's, look at the risk of pain. We're complicit in genocide. That's right. So, oh, all right, right, really. Thank you. All right. Palestine. Thank you. God yeah. bless. My name is Kathy Boylan. Thank yeah. you, Kathy. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that agree with not paying their taxes this year. And there's a lot of people that like to comment, you're just going to go to jail. Let's see how that works out for you. The IRS is going to come get you. <laughs> you know, our government is breaking the law every day. Constitutional law exists just the same as political law. And as long as the government is taking our taxpaying dollars and they're using it to give to illegal immigration, giving them the right to vote, giving them driver's license, allowing them to buy land, allowing them to buy homes, uh, giving them prepaid credit cards for those who live in hotels in New York. 
where veterans used to live in those hotels. Now they've kicked out the veterans and moved in the illegal immigrants. States like California and Illinois are allowing them to become police officers and carry a weapon while they're on duty. That's illegal. And you're not going to use my taxpaying dollars to pay for your criminal activity in this country. In order for this movement to work, everyone needs to get involved. Oh, well, they'll arrest you. No, they won't because they won't have the money to arrest you. They can't come after all of us because we have the numbers. So when are the American people going to stop being afraid? Stop being scared. Stop being controlled. Stop being sheep. We have a right to exist in this country. And with Bidenomics kicking everybody uh, while they're down, making it almost impossible to survive, you need to keep your money to take care of your family. Put a roof over their head. Put food on the table. Make sure you don't lose your car. Keep your cell phones turned on. Keep your internet, your cable. Be responsible, but don't be reckless. Paying your taxes right now to this corrupt, treasonous government is reckless and illegal. And it can be proved in a court of law that what they're doing goes against the constitutional law of this land. You won't get in as much trouble as you think you will. Stand up. Do the right thing. As for me and my family, we'll lead the charge. We are not paying our taxes this year. We are not giving in to the government's control. We will not be sheep. And we will not stand by idle and let them tell us what to do in the land of the free. I will be free. Seems like pretty sound advice to me. And for all those people that are, oh, I can't get in trouble with the law. I got to pay my taxes. I got, you know what? You know what? You can kick the can down the road a bit, but it just means your children are going to have to pay for this. And by that time, they'll probably be drafted and dead. So, you know, you do need to sacrifice. Sacrifice is necessary for victory. Always. If you think the price of winning is too high, wait till you get the bill from regret. And that bill from regret is generational. And there's a lot of people listening to this that that bill has been passed on from generation to generation and you are holding that bill right now. And somebody in some one of your generations has to pay that bill off in order for the generation to move on. And the only way that bill gets paid off is you got to be willing to make the hardest decisions. You know, all this cancel culture and censorship, it's a rehearsal. It's a dry run. That's what it was for the real thing, for the real genocide. If you can disappear from social media, then no one notices, no one cares. Well, you can disappear in the real world. Remember when they were building those COVID concentration camps for us and all that fun stuff in those dark days? Remember that? Well, these same douchebags that are pulling the strings, right? if they could do to us what they're doing to Gaza right now, you know they would. You know they would. It's a dress rehearsal for mass murder. Now, be very clear. Cancel culture is a dress rehearsal for mass murder. They're seeing if people can be disappeared from social media, and if people accept people being disappeared from social media, then they will accept people being disappeared from the world. When communists get into power, when socialists get into power, they kill us. No kidding, no fooling, and our families are lucky to get away. Yeah, yeah, it was great to be forward up a cliff. Cancel culture is a dress rehearsal for extermination. Yeah, listen, they call it character assassination. 
because it's a rehearsal, right? It's a rehearsal. Now, our governments have been trying to genocide us. I haven't been paying attention for the last four freaking years. But now that they're gone into the overt, like we don't have any court cases yet to establish that, okay, our government tried to murder the humanity with these genocide jobs. But we do have cases going before the International Court of Justice. South Africa brought one against Israel. They're also bringing one against the United States. There's your reason to not pay taxes, by the way, as soon as that case is filed and they say it's plausible. And Nicaragua is uh, taking Canada, the Netherlands, Britain, and Germany to court for complicity and genocide for supporting the genocidal Jews. This is a game changer. And as far as Canada goes, want to know when our government falls? When this case is heard or begins to be heard, uh, you know, do you think the snake news is going to cover it? I don't know and I really don't care because the word will get out. They can try to hide as much as they want, but once these charges are filed and leveled, it's a game changer. And as far as legally and in the, not like there's any law in our fallen countries, but, uh, you know, just in case you find yourself in court, I can't think of a better defense than, you know what? I couldn't pay my taxes because I can't support genocide. My government's guilty. That's a big one. You know, I have moral, moral compunction here. I can't pay to murder babies. I got an issue with that. Call me silly, call me old fashioned. It's just wrong. So I can't, I can't support a government that's complicit in genocide. We got to strangle their money, man. It's either that or armed revolution. Right. So this story sort of come out of nowhere this morning, but Nicaragua are not only going to take the UK to the International Court of Justice, potentially for complicity in Israel's genocide, but it's going to take Canada, Germany and the Netherlands there too. Though curiously not the US, which does seem weird and somewhat selective. And I wonder if they're close proximity to the US might be part of the story there. But exempting the US from their litigation will undoubtedly raise questions though. But at any rate, it looks like the UK getting its day in the dock of The Hague for aiding and abetting Israel in its actions in Gaza has just moved a step closer to becoming reality. Right, so Nicaragua, they've decided to follow in South Africa's footsteps, it seems, having taken Israel to the ICJ to now take other nations who since that ruling, that initial ruling, and those provisional orders being laid down are ignoring it and continuing to provide military support and aid to Israel, knowing they are using it to conduct their atrocities in Gaza. Proceedings, according to thus far the only media outlet covering this story, the Lebanese-based al Mayadeen, began yesterday at the ICJ, following a statement published by the Nicaraguan government on the 1st of February, setting out their case. The government of reconciliation and national unity informs the people of Nicaragua and the international community that it has notified the governments of the United Kingdom, Germany, the Netherlands and Canada of its decision to hold them responsible under international law for gross and systematic violations to the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, international humanitarian law and customary law, including the law of occupation in the occupied Palestinian territories, in particular the Gaza Strip. In this vein, in a note verbal sent to these governments, Nicaragua recalled that the facts and circumstances of the Israeli actions in and against the Palestinians led the International Court of Justice to conclude on the 26th of January 2024 that at least some of the rights claimed by South Africa and for which it is seeking protection are plausible. This is the case with respect to the right of the Palestinians in Gaza to be protected from acts of genocide and related prohibited acts identified in Article 3. Although the order on provisional measures of the court is not a judgment on the merits, nevertheless on the evidence publicly available, the court found it plausible that the Genocide Convention has been and is being violated by Israel. If genocide is plausibly occurring in the Gaza Strip in the judgment of the highest world court, it cannot be otherwise in the judgment of the international community that is also dramatically aware of the same facts that led the court to that conclusion. The obligation to prevent genocide arises and begins when there is a risk of it occurring. 
In fact, when it is plausible that it is occurring or might occur, this plausibility is now beyond doubt and dispute. In that sense, Nicaragua has urged the governments of the United Kingdom, Germany, the Netherlands and Canada to immediately halt the supply of arms, ammunition, technology and or components to Israel as it is plausible they might have been used to facilitate or commit violations of the Genocide Convention, including but not limited to acts of genocide, attempted genocide, complicity in genocide and conspiracy to commit genocide. Unfortunately, the provision of military weapons and other assistance capable of being used in the genocide taking place has not stopped or diminished since the genocidal attacks of Israel on the Gaza Strip began in October 2023, and in some cases has indeed increased. Nicaragua has reminded these governments that a state's obligation to prevent and the corresponding duty to act arise at the instant that the state learns of, or should normally have learned of, the existence of a serious risk that genocide will be committed. Furthermore, Nicaragua has warned that the recent announcements by these governments on the suspension of the funds to the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, UNRWA, further exposes that in the present scenario, the governments of the United Kingdom, Germany, the Netherlands and Canada continue to disregard their obligations and to actively facilitate violations of the rules of international law by Israel to the severe and immediate prejudice of the Palestinian people, particularly Gazans and the international community as a whole. In particular, Nicaragua has underscored that this act contributes to the collective punishment of the Palestinians and to the apparent objective of forcing the Palestinian population to leave the occupied Palestinian territories, particularly Gaza, and preventing the exercise of their right to self-determination. Consequently, Nicaragua has given written notice to these governments that it will adopt all measures it considers appropriate in accordance with international law, including recourse to the International Court of Justice, to guarantee respect for these fundamental international texts and customary international law. The Government of Reconciliation and National Unity reaffirms its firm commitment to the rule of law at the international level and the peaceful settlement of disputes between states. Managua, 1st of February 2024, Government of Reconciliation and National Unity, Republic of Nicaragua. It's a no olds barred bruiser of a statement, though I can only imagine the reaction that got in Downing Street, laughed at and thrown in the bin. Nicaragua? Who are they? Where are they again? I can't remember the last time I saw one of theirs. I can quite conceivably believe such would be the abject arrogance and disdain for being held to account that the likes of Sunak and co would have. Nicaragua have a valid point, though. And an attitude like that, if that has been the government's response behind closed doors, could well see them summoned to The Hague. I assume because actions allegedly have begun yesterday that their statement and the note verbal that they sent each government, which is just a, a diplomatic phrase for written correspondence with the receiving state's foreign office, so they can't say they've not been told in effect, before things move on. And this appears to be what Al Mayadeen are now reporting today. Now I can play you clips, lots of them, in fact, of uh, Jews saying, oh, Hashem says that we have to murder the babies, that they're going to grow up and murder Jews, so we have to kill all the children. It's the Jewish way. Yeah, you know what? They're snakes. They're not human. Every human being on earth with a fleshy heart can instinctively know that you don't harm children, man. Even with a language where it doesn't matter. People know. Now I can literally make a video that is hours and hours and hours long of suffering children, of children getting their limbs blown off, children being operated on without anesthetic. I've seen so much suffering of children by these bloody Jews that um, I relate to the way this guy thinks and uh, I think he might be on or something. Okay, I'm going to bite on this one because I have a really good example, man. I lived with a lifer. He was serving two life sentences at Snake River Correctional Facility. Hands down, one of the best sellies that I've ever had in my life. And I'm going to share his story with you guys without sharing his name for his privacy. 
This dude actually lived really close to where my parents live in Oregon. He found out that his uncle had been molesting his little sister, severely molesting his little sister, for three years. He got his uncle to come to a fucking campfire out in the woods with him. He ended up putting dude in a fucking hole piece by fucking piece. He was actually really smart about it. He burned his fucking clothes and he even bleached underneath his fucking fingernails. The only reason that he ended up getting caught was because his dad ended up telling on him. You see, I believe in justified fucking murder. I believe that we should take out the fucking trash. I believe that we should protect women and children. To the fucking highest order, I believe in executions when it comes to people victimizing little kids. So justified murder is a thing to me. Hands down, flat out, on the fucking table, total transparency. You know what is never fucking justified to me? You know what there is never a reason, an excuse, or an explanation for? Ruining someone's innocence by taking their bodily autonomy from them so that you can get your fucking dick off. Does that sound harsh? Good! I think this shit should be public. I think it should be absolutely done publicly. It should be broadcast on TV. We should be swinging them from fucking electric lines. And they should be made an absolute example of. Predators are getting bold as fuck these days. And I think it's time to make them fucking afraid again. Now, I said earlier in this video that I was going to touch on Trump. Now, if you've been uh, following my work for any period of time, you'd know that I was a huge Trump supporter. You know, I was a, a Q guy, too. And, uh, you know, I, I still see the good that came out of Q, the formation of the Digital Army, all that. Um, but let, let's get on to, to Trump and the important things here. Now... I am really conflicted with this because there's obvious ties to Israel and now that we can all see who the deep state is and the fact that the Rothschilds own the deed to Israel, kind of the deep state, so it's Trump siding with the deep state. Is that is that what's going on? Is everybody Zionist occupied government is all controlled, all of it is Trump controlled. And I don't have an answer for you, man. I really don't. You know, I can weigh evidence one way or the other. Now, I could weigh evidence, so that shows us Jew connections and all that kind of stuff. But then I also think uh, history that we just lived through. Remember the beginning of the COVID crime against humanity and all that? And the whole world was going squirrely. Um, they tried to get Trump to start a war with Iran, and he didn't. He did not. He also said that he was going to, well, he actually gave the order. He issued the order to evacuate the uh, soldiers, American soldiers, from Syria and Iraq because they're what? They're sitting ducks right now used to rope America into a war for Israel. So if he's really on board with the Zionists, would he do that? Would he uh, take away their human shields? Again, I don't know. But I do think Stu Peters here is uh, onto something. He's uh, asking the questions that need to be asked. If we, if we have a free and fair election, which I don't think that we've really fixed 2020. But if we have a free and fair election and the fake polls that you watch, if you believe any of that, I mean, obviously Trump's going to be the nominee. Trump's going to win the election, hands down. If this is the group of people that we're selecting from, Trump's going to win the election if it's a free and fair one. I, I concede that. I believe that. What is he going to do, though? Like specifically, when you say shake up or expose the deep state, is he going to denounce the bioweapon shots and say, hey, they were dangerous and we made a mistake? Is he going to is he going to eradicate and completely neutralize and eliminate the Zionist threat by the Israel lobby that controls all of these politicians and take down APAC and, and confront the ADL? And get people, you know, I mean, we don't have a freedom of speech because of these people. Is he going to take big, bold, brass balls steps like that? But then I see clips like this, and I think to myself, is this some kind of 5D chess, art of the deal stuff? You're feigning to be Israel, supporting Israel, when uh, you're just positioning yourself to be able to close the deal? I don't know. This clip kind of makes it sound like that might be what's going on, but I'll let you draw your own conclusions. It just never ends. But the key is a lasting peace. If you have a lasting peace, first thing you have to ask, do they both want to make it? I have a real question as to whether or not both sides wants to make it. I have a real question as to one side in particular, whether or not they want to make it. Well, I don't want to say that right now. I think one side actually would like a deal, and I think the other one maybe doesn't want a deal, to be honest. I don't want to say it. No. Look, 
We show our cards too much in the good. I wrote the art of the deal. We show our cards too much. So if I get into that, I don't want to say this and that, and then they'll come and they'll say, well, Trump is biased one way or the other. I think there's a chance that you could probably make a deal if you had a real deal maker, if you had somebody that knew what he or she was doing. In my opinion, if Israel wants to make a deal, I think a deal could be made. I think a lot is going to do with Israel. A lot's good. Look, it's going to have to do with both sides, but a lot will have to do with Israel and whether or not Israel wants to make the deal. But he wanted to make a deal more than Netanyahu. And I will be honest, uh, I had a great meeting with him, Abbas, right? I had a great meeting with him, and we spent a lot of time together, talked about many things. And it was almost like a father. I mean, he was so nice. Couldn't have been nicer. And after meeting with Bibi for three minutes, I looked at him and said, you don't want to make a deal, do you? And he said, well, uh, uh, uh. And the fact is, I don't think Bibi ever wanted to make a deal. Why? I thought the Palestinians were impossible, that the, the Israelis would do anything to make peace and a deal. I found that not to be true. Now, I always try to include a little song in here. And include, well, once just a little spoof clip. It's not long. It's funny, though, because... Uh, the Jews got to Tom McDonald, and uh, so somebody decided to edit Ben Shapiro and uh, speak some truth into it. And the second song, the first one's just like 20 seconds or something like that. Second song is from Owen Benjamin and How They Do Ya. Because they do. Let's just keep it real, thanks. Don't care how you feel, man. If you want my pronouns, I'm the man. I'm the man who don't respect. Goyim can't be chosen, Tam will tell me no way I worry about was a girl or a boy Homie, I stay clipping these coins Oh boy, I'll be filled up with joy When Gaza's completely destroyed Conic Mockingbird has been deployed And Candace Sawis, she was almost unemployed I beat chickens at death, a dreidel is my favorite toy This was a lot of fun, Tom, you're a good shabbos boy This ain't rap, this ain't money, cars and clothes we ain't selling drugs, we ain't gonna... This is dedicated to the great Mr. Henry Ford. Have you driven a Ford lately? How they do ya? I heard there was a grabber plot to influence your every thought. But you don't seem to like conspiracy, do ya? There are Jews in power everywhere, but you can't let your mind go there. You're blind to them, and this is how they do ya. 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 Their tales were sad, but you wanted proof of Anne Frank hiding in her roof. They said you're so full of hate, and how dare ya? Your inquiry was called a sin, but they never answered your question. So there's no proof, and this is how they do ya. How they do ya, how they do ya, how they do ya, how they do ya. There was a time when you thought you knew that right was red and left was blue, but now you don't see no difference, do ya? Each congressperson, red or blue, has been blackmailed by a Jew. They're all corrupt, and this is how they do ya. How they do ya. How they do ya. How they do ya. How they do Netanyahu has called for war. He 
lied to us on the UN floor. Fear Saddam was planted and it grew, yeah. We stained America's good name by killing who was not to blame for our own fears. And this is how they do ya. 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 How they do. Well, that's all I got for you today, Patriots. Actually, I'm going to include one more clip here. Um, because the reason why it took so long between videos, uh, well, part of the reason, is I was in Ottawa for the anniversary, I guess, for the Freedom Convoy. And uh, talking to a lot of Freedom Fighters. And uh, there's a lot of lawfare going on. And I'm going to make a video. But uh, right now, uh, Norm Travesty, and I'll leave his email in the description, is looking um, to file a suit himself, and he wants to know if anybody has clips of the uh, Gestapo, the, uh, you know, the thugs that came in and uh, brutalized the Freedom Convoy of them speaking a different language. He wants to nail them for uh, importing UN soldiers. So, uh, if anyone has anything, and like I said, it's in the description, contact him. Here's what he had to say. Hey, I'm here with Norm Travesty, and he's uh, taking Trudeau to court. You're going to want to hear this. If all goes well, I will be charging Trudeau, Lametti, and Freeland with treason in the Ottawa courthouse next week. Uh, I've got it 95% done. It's not just me. There's a group of us working together. I need whatever pictures, whatever evidence you've got of uh, Ukrainian and Chinese uh, troops on Parliament Hill beating the crap out of Canadians for lawfully protesting. I need that. As much evidence as you can get. I need pictures of the UN planes in North Bay and the 32 buses that brought them here. Whatever I can get of their uh, uniforms with no insignia, no rank, no name tags. That was using a foreign force against Canadians. That in itself is treason and we're just going to pile on from there. So whatever evidence you've got, including their connections to the WEF, send to traversy.n at gmail.com t-r-a-v-e-r-s-y dot n as in norman at gmail.com thank you sounds like a great idea if you got any of that send them a link man cheers well that's all i got for you today patriots you know uh i want to give a big shout out though um to uh red pepper thai viet Asian Fusion Cuisine. It's a restaurant that's in Ottawa. And I went there when, uh, you know, during the, the anniversary, I guess. I just wanted to see what was happening in Ottawa. And, uh, you know, they treated us great. They stayed open during the dark days. They resisted the government. And they always had their doors open for freedom fighters. So if you're in Ottawa, go to this restaurant, man. Their food's awesome. And, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if it was the owner or just the staff or, or who's who. But uh, they took me aside because I was, I was there with a bunch of other freedom fighters. And they came up and I said, are you son of Enos? And I said, yeah, why? I said, I didn't recognize you with the hat. I, I said, without the hat, I'm incognito, man. You're not supposed to recognize me. And then they said, um, you know, they took me aside and they said, you know, We'd like to contribute to the work uh, that you do, cause uh, you know you're on you're 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 on the mark, and uh, you're one of the few truthers out there that actually speak the truth. So they they gave me some money to support my work. How nice is that? I thought that was very cool. So I'm definitely giving them a shout out. And if you're in Ottawa, go eat their food. It's awesome. It's really really good. You know, and I'm not just saying that. I I pigged out there, and uh, I really enjoyed myself.
But uh, speaking of Ottawa, first let's get this out of the way. Uh, this channel is viewer supported, as you know, give send go.com forward slash son of Enos. In the description is the mailing address. And, uh, my next video, I'm going to, because like, Patriots are on our offensive, man. I got a couple court cases that we're on the offensive now, taking the government to court. And, uh, I was speaking with, uh, Rebecca from Stanford D. And they're really good with the common law and stuff like that. And we're, Trying to get together a template and instructions, and she might even give me a clip or two for my next video on how to privately prosecute these tyrants. Court system screwed up? Yeah, absolutely. But they did just rule that the uh, Trudeau invoking the Emergencies Act was illegal, unlawful, and criminal, basically. <laughs> he violated our rights. Well, not criminal, but it, it is criminal what he did. So, um... You know, if we can put together how to do it, you know I'm going to. I'm going all the way with this. As I'm in this to the end, man. Either they're going to take my life or we're going to win. One of the two. Whatever comes first, I really don't freaking care. No fear, man. But, you know, if we can put together how to prosecute these people on your own. And you can do that in Canada. I'm not sure about the United States, but I, I, there might be something similar. I have to look into it. But this stuff is going down. And we are on the offensive. You know, we are taking the initiative. And uh, it feels good. It really does. And uh, things are looking up. I'll tell you that. The genocidal Jews are going down. Things are going to get squirrely. You know, they're literally the spawn of Satan. Satan. They're going to throw one more clip in here. Scott Ritter right here. Because he says exactly that. I, I just got to include it. The great Seymour Hirsch. Uh wrote a book called The Samson Option. And basically, Samson, of course, is from the Bible, reference to the uh, strong man with the long hair. And Delilah seduced him, cut his hair, became weak. But in the end, he got his strength back and pushed down the temple and killed everybody. So the Samson Option is if we're going down, everybody's going down. We're pushing it in. The whole temple's coming down. Everybody dies. And that basically is the deter deterrence. It tells the you know hundreds of millions of Arabs who live around Israel that um, if you want to destroy us, you know, understand that we will kill all of you in the process. So it's not about defeating the IDF. The IDF is being defeated in Gaza right now. And if they go to war against Hezbollah, they're going to be defeated there. It comes down to the existential survival of Israel. And there's a difference. I mean, you know, we're talking about a two-state solution, a one-state solution. If there's a negotiated process that Israel is participating in, then we don't have the panic and the fear. But if we see the collapse of the IDF, we see uh, Arab armies overrunning uh, Israel, we see the slaughter of hundreds of thousands of Israeli um, citizens, things like that, then I think the Israelis would use nuclear weapons. And uh, no, you're not going to shoot them all down. They would inflict serious harm on the region. Uh, it'd also be the individual, but they don't care because it's a Samson option, which means we're taking, and people are going, well, the Israelis wouldn't be crazy. Hannibal Directive, these are the guys that kill their own soldiers and their own civilians just because they've been taken hostage. They pump poison gas into uh you know, in, in the tunnels and, and, and kill their own people, even though they know they're down there. No, the Israelis, I'm finishing up uh, part two of my Sympathy for the Devil uh, article series, and uh, I don't want to give it away, but the Israelis are inherently evil. And if Satan resides in the earth today, he resides in Israel, and he's infected the heart and the soul of many of Israel's current leaders, including Benjamin Netanyahu. What's the most Jewish sound? <sighs> If the devil himself was alive, which I think he is, the Antichrist, he lives in Israel. No shit. They're snakes. They're serpents. Anyway, man, anyway. It's, uh, geez, it's, uh, seven in the morning. I've been at this all freaking night. So I'm gonna call her in, man. Till next time, we are the news now. Peace.